Dr. Hong. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you for joining us. And you may hear that in the, our first cases from Asan Medical Center, so we're going to show some minimal, you know, contrast type of procedures. You are just reading about the general contrast, you know, table uh, by uh, TEE. However, uh, we, we wanna, anyway, it's a very important role for the patient group who had a, a relatively, you know, a renal Protection. compromised patient. And so I really thank you for reading concept. All right. And uh, would you introduce the cases and the faculties for that? Okay, uh, first of all, I, I'd like to the thanks to you uh, for inviting me and the Professor Go. Uh, uh, actually, this is a very good chance to us. And uh, you know, uh, my, my side, Professor Go is my colleague, Professor An, as you know, and uh, fellow. And uh, actually, we prepared a, a very interesting, stressful uh, cases of it. Dr. An, please okay. introduce. I'm, I'm going to oh, okay. introduce the case. Uh, we have a a uh, 70 year old female patient uh, she complained of uh, effort chest pain uh, she had a history of diabetes uh, and uh, end stage renal disease dependent on hemodialysis and uh, the uh, she she had uh, underwent uh, pci um, in 2010 and uh, 2012 uh, due to triple vessel disease and uh, on admission the coronary angiogram showed patent stents, and echocardiogram showed a uh, decreased uh, every function. Next slide, please. Um, the Euroscore I, uh, STS score and Euroscore Ys, this patient uh, belongs to high risk, uh, risk group. So STS score is eight. Uh, next slide. The echocardiogram showed decreased every function. The ejection fraction was uh, 35. Uh, percent and uh, LT fair area is 0 0.98. The pressure gradient was low, so we assume that uh, the patient has low flow, low gradient uh, uh, AS, uh, and there was a moderate functional MR. And to check the uh, contractile reserve, uh, dopamine stress echo was performed, and there was a mild increase in the LV function. And with the uh, uh, more intensive medication, we found today the LV function was increased to uh, with LV ejection fraction 45%. And the EKG showed normal sinus rhythm. And the next slide, please. Uh, this is the double time stress echo. The, the LV function was increased up to uh, 41%. Because. Yeah, next slide. Okay. Uh, next slide. This is CG. Next. The echo, uh, X ray. Next. Okay. Um, okay, let me introduce uh, yeah. Professor Kim. Uh, can you show the echo image uh, right now? Uh, this is a parastan long axis. Please the show us the, the echocardiographic image on the screening. Yeah. Yes. Can you uh, follow the arrow yes. like this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is a parastan long axis image from transplant echo. As you can see here, the LV function is moderately depressed. Uh, you can see a heavily calcified and severely stenotic valve right here. This is a magnified view uh, on color flow exam, uh, no AR right now. In short X image, you can see a beautiful tri tricusp uh, severely stenotic aortic valve here. Uh, this is an uh, apical four chamber view. Uh, the regional omeration omeration is not observed in this view. The average function of around 40%. Uh, some, uh, Mitral classification uh, were, was noted. And the functional one right now, I just mild degree. In C double tracing, uh, the peak breath is less than three meters per second. Uh, as you see, uh, some, uh, some concern of underestimation right now. Thank you. OK. Uh, the, we have CT right. data. Echo image, echo image concern. What do you think? The trans echo, I think, is quite enough. Yeah, All right, yeah. <laughs> Professor Kim is a really expert. So expert have transistoric echo. We can get a lots of information, uh, you know, even in the, uh, we don't use a transesophageal echo. So we really prefer MAC procedure, minimalist, yep. uh, you know, approach. Okay. Yeah.
We so, will continue yeah. the presentation. Yeah, we'd like to show the uh, CT images. So despite the fact that pa the patient uh, has uh, end-stage renal disease, the patient has uh, relat relatively uh, minimal uh, classification of annulus apparatus. So this is the CT finding of aortic annulus view. Uh, the annulus short uh, diameter is 22 millimeter, long diameter 26, so mean diameter is 24. Annulus area is 444, and annulus uh, area dri uh, driven diameter is also uh, 20, uh, approximately 24 millimeter. Next slide. This is the sinus of Vaisalva. The area uh, of um, the diameter of sinus Vaisalva is uh, around uh, 30 millimeter. And SD junction has a mean diameter of uh, 26. Next slide. This low, uh, the LV outflow uh, track, the mean di uh, long, short diameter is 21 and long diameter is 27. So mean diameter is around 24. Next slide. So l slightly smaller than annulus itself. And as you can see here, uh, small amount of uh, calcium. So I think it is minimally uh, classified. Next slide. So this is the, um, the coronary heights. So both uh, coronary ostia uh, is, are located uh, you know, sufficiently uh, distant uh, from the annulus level. Next slide. This is the uh, axis, iliofemoral axis. Uh, both sides, the iliac artery has diameter uh, uh, larger than seven millimeter. However, on the right side, the common femoral artery has uh, uh, calcification so uh, we decide to uh, 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 introduce the, the, uh, the valve caster on the left side. Next slide. This is the sizing plan for the uh, Sapien 3 valve. So the patient has an annulus area of 444. This is uh, corresponding to uh, Sapien 3 20 millimeter volume uh, valve. So if you have a nominal uh, uh, balloon uh, inflation, then we will have uh, uh, 17 uh, oversizing. So uh, we'll have to discuss uh, whether we will go for the nominal pressure, nominal uh, inflation, or we will uh, whether we need to reduce the uh, balloon volume. Next, uh, the, the, this is the standard projection for the uh, TAVI procedure. Next. So basically, so we go for septum three, and uh, we will uh, use the left femoral artery. Um, and that's all. Okay. In summary, this is uh, the 70 uh, years female patient, uh, diabetes, and uh, the uh, ESRD with uh, the hemodialysis. And uh, anatomy itself is uh, maybe uh, simple. However, clinically very high risk patient. We uh, have to be attention in case of the, the LV dysfunction with uh, the low pressure, low gradient. The procedure itself is uh, simple. However, immediately after the, there is a the sudden change of the hemodynamic collapse in the low pressure and the low gradient aortic stenosis patient. Therefore, we have to be always confirmed by the, the double timing stress echo with uh, the, uh, there is uh, any the, uh, uh, presence of the, the Contractile reserve, as you, uh, uh, the professor go presented, the uh, it was uh, the uh, there was uh, the contractile reserve. However, anyhow, this is a clinically high risk patient. The procedure is a uh, simple procedure, and uh, the uh, we initial plan was that uh, the sapient three is a uh, uh, 26 is a nominal pressure. However, the oversize was. Uh, 17. So the uh, I'd like to uh, personally, once it's all uh, on the size, on the field, it uh, makes uh, the uh, nine percent oversize. That is uh, the our uh, 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 plan. Is there any comment about the, the, uh, our plan and the patient presentation? Great, great. Okay. Any uh, comment? But uh, Dr. Hong, can I ask you a question about the contractile reserve? If after the dope built mean stress echo, there's no contractile reserve for this particular patient. Will you still go ahead with uh, TAVA procedures or will this alter your management plan? We have another specialist. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask but, him. Uh, regarding the contractile reserve, uh, 
this is a very controversial issue. Uh, uh, most of the study are published in, in, in the era of cyber, in patient without contractor laser. Uh, the points of, uh, after AVR is extremely poor, but this is uh, the era of uh, uh, tabar procedure, uh, no uh, uh, open heart surgery, uh, but uh, we have to evaluate our randomized control trial in patient without contractor laser. Therefore, we need uh, the another specialist. Mm -hmm. Any other comment? <laughs> Any question? Yep. Any comment on that? Uh, you mean the uh, contractor reserve or mm. this case? Uh, this case. Uh, so actually, the uh, the case has the 444 millimeters square of the annulus. So I totally agree with Dr. Holm that to underfill the BAB by 1 cc or maybe 2 cc. But I think the uh, one CC is sufficient for this case because he doesn't she doesn't have the uh, two big calcium. Uh, in in fact, uh, if you look at the amount of calcium, it's just only thirty eight cubic millimeter. It's a very you know small amount. It's almost you know clean uh, you know aortic stenosis here. So for particular these cases, we you know choose the in our practice, it choose a little bit. You know, higher the overstretching ratios, all, all, almost 20 percent, sometimes 25 percent. Early stretching, meaning is there are not too much calcium, you know, for, into uh, anchoring issues. However, particular this case is actually a little bit different. Uh, sinus ratio, ST junction ratio, is relatively small. The meaning is the whole aorta and valve shape is just straight and very small, you know, sinus size, and so. Uh, to be honest, in the nominal 26 is 17 percent of stretching. Uh, you know, it's our concept based on the, our concept, we want to do a little bit bigger. So, however, relatively small out at arch uh, issues, and so we choose the 26 nominal. And however, Dr. Hong is you know more concerned about the ones which on the field. I think it's, I, I agree that one. So, however. The meaning yeah, is by CT findings, whole aorta, you know, uh, features and characteristics, so we can choose the device size and device selection to them. Can I have a question? And Dr. Hong, I'm uh, Dr. Chao from Taiwan, mm -hmm. and uh, the coronary height is quite low, and the patient uh, looked at seems to have uh, some PCI before. So uh, would you do the coronary protection uh, for this case, or would you implant the, the Actually, S3 the a little bit lower for the future PCI? Uh, good comment. But the, uh, actually, the height is uh, the more than a 10. So I think the, the distance was uh, uh, longer than 50 millimeters. So there was exception okay. space. You see, it's okay. a 16 and 15. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. I think it's very important to keep the safari wire in the fluoroscopy to avoid the perforation of the left ventricle. Just straight. Pulled out. Yes. The delivery. Balloon. Now, Dr. Han is pulling back gently towards the bypass ceases. And it's also very important to go to a little bit cranial mm -hmm. to see the bath totally perpendicular. Exact positioning of first and device. Okay. 
when I advance it, the, the uh, sapient three try to the passage is uh, below the pigtail, uh, intentionally not scratch it, uh, the aortic arch. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important point. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, to avoid the uh, injury. じゃあ、オレンゴルジョン。1度15度やったんだけどね。注文を準備しよう。テスト。テスト。テスト。シェンズ、ドブリダレーション。え、生チカルシュン。just direct placement. Do you have the arterial blood pressure on the screen? Push in. Hold the pressure back uh, to uh, this is the middle marker. <laughs> Very nice. Very high. Okay. 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 Test. Okay. 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 And you? Yeah. Great. 자, 다시 한번 테스트. 테스트. 자, 여기. 자, 가자고. 네. 페이싱. 지금은? 자, 인지어. 네. 인젝션. 하나, 둘, 셋, 넷, 다섯. 시작, 뱃. 페이싱 오프. 페이싱 오프. 천천히. 천천히. 천천히 더 기다려. Very quiet. <웃음> We are uh, waiting for a recovery of the hemodynamic status. So, uh, as I said, uh, the so LV dysfunction, really low pressure, the low gradient is a sudden change of the hemodynamic collapse. We have to be concerned. So how high is the blood pressure now? Please show that the uh, hemodynamic status on the screening is uh, the systole is uh, the 86, not uh, the echocardiographic okay. image. Okay, good. Great. Great. Mm. So finally, have you deployed with nominal volume or one cc, one cc on the field? On the field. Okay. That so corresponds to okay. uh, 12 to 13 percent oversizing. Okay. Okay. We will check it with uh, the yep. LV. By a and can we see the echocardiography? Okay, of yeah, course. Can you see the image of echocardiography? Uh, Please show the, the echocardiography. Yes, yeah, surprising. The LV function much improved just after <laughs> procedure. Uh, nice comment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. T transthoracic echo is also very good with good hands. Thank you. Short axis. I think just uh, less than mild, just mild from uh, 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems Great. quite good. Mm -hmm. I'll move to apical images. Mm. 
So any comment from panel? Uh, is PBO minimal or trivial? Okay. I think just a trivial PBO. Yep. Yeah. Lepandu, the first degree B block. Yeah. Yeah, just a trivial PBO. Okay, actually there is a, uh, some block. So uh, initially we have to be uh, observe the dissipation. Maybe uh, tomorrow is uh, the, the resolution of the some block, but in the current situation is uh, the maintaining in the hemodynamic state is uh, more important. And uh, uh, retrospectively we think about it. Uh, you know, actually we deploy the valve with uh, the uh, one cc uh, on the field. Is uh, the size is uh, the 13 or 12 uh, percent oversize. But uh, if we select uh, the nominal size uh, for the prevention of the, the embolization or migration of the valve, uh, 17 percent uh, the oversize is uh, my, maybe the possibility of the block is uh, the risk is that uh, the uh, block is uh, more higher. Well, another point is this patient is uh, dependent on thermodialysis. So if she requires a permanent pacemaking, permanent pacemaker, then the, we need to have you know uh, venous access for the pacemaker leads, and uh, I think then she loses one uh, access for the you know future um, the dialysis access. So this is also uh, one point we have to consider. Yep. Okay. Uh, so finally, uh, I'd like to check it the, the uh, air to ground. Now you're putting the pacemaker from the uh, femoral vein. Yes. And uh, do you change the position of the pacemaker from uh, of course, cervical of course. vein now, or do you leave the patient as it is? And uh, if the patient still have the block tomorrow, uh, would you change the position of the pacemaker from the neck? Yes. So what is your uh, clear, the, you, usually, your practice? my practice pattern is that the. Uh, observe that the status of the, the uh, block is uh, uh, one day in the, the CCU and uh, observe it and the something happened uh, and then we will change the, the position of the temporary. Uh, fortunately, the block is uh, the resolve it, maybe at the time remove it. So it depends on the, the situation the tomorrow. Yep, that's true. Well, it okay. Sometimes patient recover from AV block right, tomorrow. Right, 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 Because uh, the Dr. Kim said that the uh, LV function is uh, dramatically improved. So hopefully, yep. we hope that. So enjoy. Yep. I like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Very nice position, no PVL. Any other? Comments. So great case. Thank you. Any question, comments? Dr. Bob, uh, any other excellent result? Yeah, yeah, I think the the perfect uh, result. So okay. we really congratulate the uh, the team for the very nice uh, case demonstration. Thank you, Dr. Ayesta. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Great case.